Between the 1940s and the 1990s, Jeep consistently made a pickup truck, and then it didn't. But now the Gladiator is back, and the front half is mostly Wrangler, as you can see. But the rear half, as you can also see, is 80 centimetres longer because it has this pickup truck bed of nearly one and a half metres wide and a full one and a half metres long. Now, despite the extra length, Jeep says this car is still the world's most capable pickup truck off-road. So let's find out. Now, if you live in America, that means that the Gladiator is a mid-size pickup truck. If you live in the UK, you will be thinking, this feels more than mid-size to me, and you would be right. Think of it as a rival to double cab pickups that we get in Britain, like the Ford Ranger or the Toyota Hilux, Nissan Navara, Volkswagen Amarok. And of those, it is closest in ethos to none because they all are commercial vehicles because they can put more than a thousand kilograms in the load bed that they have back there. Now this Jeep cannot do that. It has a steel load bed, which apparently is better than aluminium or composite for being durable. But even so, it is rated to carry 670 kilos rather than more than a ton. Now that means, it's a little bit complicated in the UK, but that means it's slightly more difficult to get a tax advantage off of the back of it. It means you are more likely to pay the VAT on it, which is 20%, which is quite a lot. And that's assuming, of course, that this car does come to the UK officially, which, as I talk to you now, is not confirmed, but may well be by the time this video goes live. I think we'll get it in the UK, is what I'm saying. So like the Ford Ranger Raptor, which has been designed to go off-road very well, this, in being designed to go off-road well and have terrific axle articulation, amazing off-road axle articulation, underbody durability, just the ability to be driven in more places than any other car means that it's not built to have a ton of bricks in the back or tow a three and a half ton trailer. Instead, it's rated to tow 2.7 tons. You can take 670 kilos in the load bay. And actually, that's probably plenty if it's a lifestyle adventure vehicle. Now, this car I'm driving is a US spec car, so it gets a big petrol V6 engine. Not terribly popular in the UK, that sort of thing, because petrol's really expensive and so is road fund license for cars like this. Now the Wrangler in the UK comes with a 2.2 litre diesel, but the problem with that is that it is not bold enough, it's not powerful enough to pull a car which has a curb weight 200 kilos heavier than a Wrangler, plus all of the extra load that you might put in the back. So we will get a three litre turbo diesel engine for now, and perhaps electrification in future. In fact, definitely electrification in future, because Jeep has a plan not only to make its cars more compliant with CO2 regulations in Europe, but also to make its cars more capable. And it says you can do that if you have cars that are electrically powered because you can put torque wherever you want to, whenever you want to, and that makes them actually better off-road. So not only does electrification mean you can put your guilt aside and still run an SUV rather than thinking, oh, I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel so bad, I can't possibly have a large pickup truck because I'm burning fuel unnecessarily. Well, if you're not burning any fuel at all and the electric is coming from a sustainable, renewable source, hey, no more guilt about owning an SUV. So what's it like? Well, off-road, absolutely incredible. It's driving through an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which has a low ratio option and low is really, really low. But also I can lock the rear differential or the front and rear differentials can disconnect the front anti-roll bar, which is a really cool feature that is, which gives it even more axle articulation on the live front and rear axles. This thing off-road is not quite up to Wrangler standards, but it is exceptional, really, really exceptional by any other 4x4 standards. What that means often on the road is that things are not quite so perfect. And the same is true here. You can tell this is a long vehicle you can tell that the front and rear axles are dealing with different loads at rather different times. You know, the front is worrying about whatever it's worrying about, and the rear is worrying about whatever the front was worrying about some, some seconds earlier. So it has that kind of slight shimmy and shake, and the steering acts in a rather advisory capacity. But I like it. I'm still in here. I'm still warm. I'm still dry. I've got a funkier, chunkier interior than you find in a commercial vehicle-based pickup truck with more interest, more going on, and I think probably higher grade materials. I mean, still not normal SUV standards of quality, but it feels fine and it's interesting and there's stuff 
going on. And hey, I've got heated seats and heated steering wheel. I'm quite easily pleased. That stuff makes me quite happy. But it's still, I reckon, the closest competitor to the Ford Ranger Raptor. And what I would like to do, and what I think I will do at some point when this car is confirmed to come to the UK, is get the two together. Because my guess is they'll be similarly priced, pushing 50 grand, similarly well equipped in terms of their acceleration and their road noise and everything else. But anyway, we'll get the two together. We'll try them on road, try them off road, find out which is more fun, which is more capable. But until then, know that the Gladiator is a cool thing and it is mega off-road and it's just great fun. It lets, it, it lets you do things that other off-roaders do not let you do thanks to the fact that Jeeps are just bought and enjoyed by people who just have fun in them. They have loads of fun in them. I mean, how much fun is this? Look, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it more than you can possibly know. But if you give us a like, maybe subscribe. I know I say this every time, but I you know, really would appreciate it. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, never miss one. We're here on YouTube at least every week at autocar.co.uk. There is new stuff for all the time. And even Autocar, the world's oldest surviving car magazine, established 1895, 125 years ago this year. That's available every Wednesday in all good news agents. So thanks very much. See you next time.